Yeah. That's good. Usually by this time I got the shots. I can't believe it, Mark. You just, uh, you know, wow. Oh, yeah. I'm going into the battle of the wits on arm today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> good morning, everyone. It's 9.30 or close enough to that official time within seconds. We are going to um, go into our work session for this day, and we had scheduled for the work session to talk about the geographic information system, better known abbreviated GIS, that the county has. And um, I had been uh, in meetings talking with Julie and Mark, our county auditor, county engineer, um, regarding what our system has been, how it's been working or not. There was a proposal presented last year from regional planning um, about going in with multiple partners in this um, that didn't get 100% off the ground, not because it wasn't a good plan, but just because uh, some of the partners had questions on what they were going to get for their money, et cetera. Um, it was easier for some to secure that funding and guarantee it than others, too. Then we, um, the COG introduced that they were going to got money for a study to do a study on GIS um, for the county, for the region. I'm not exactly what all that study is going to come up with, um, but there was a preliminary meeting after Julie and Mark and I met talking about things. <laughs> Um, you know, at that meeting there was discussions about what they might want to look for to try to get out of that study. I think it's going to bring about a regional perspective of all the great benefits GIS could bring. But I'm, in my opinion, was that I think without a firm, solid foundation of how our system's operating, if that never happened or if it does happen, it makes all the difference in the world because I don't think they're going to find the golden pot of money at the end of the rainbow with that study, but that's my personal opinion. So from there, um, Julie and Mark and I talked again. I just put together some preliminary notes that I showed them back in January, revised it since then, and asked both of them to be here today to talk more about how this looks. Um, and that was just the, the diagram, Julie, that I had done. If you get another copy, I got one here. Um, of how we might structure Please. how GIS benefits us. Do you have one, Mark? I don't. I just bring one. You, do you have enough? Yeah, oh yeah. I brought yeah, all my other stuff back. So that. from there, I'll let, you know, maybe these two talk about it, but I I did ask the prosecutor if we wanted to make our tax map office a GIS slash tax map office or vice versa, can we do that? And it seems to be that's not a big deal to, to do that that way. Um, and then we've had changes of personnel with the person who was doing some GIS work um, as well. So all of that has occurred in the last six months. Mm -hmm. And so to where we're at, I don't know exactly how to start, but I am suggesting that we take this on under the general fund where we fund tax map and include the GIS and combine that. And this is our discussion on it, you know. So um, do you, either one of you want to have any some opening statement on this? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Or? If I could make a statement yeah. here first, yeah. that, and I just got off the phone with uh, with the card with John DeVoli, and and it is my understanding that this study is going to deal more with the governance, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, but the governance of how the GIS would be implemented, how it would, uh, who would run it. And how these different entities, the input that they would have in on it—that's that's my understanding. of is that a, is that a correct assumption? I have. You know, what have you heard from anybody in the study? No. The meeting was February fourth that the COG invited out the stakeholders, and I have not heard from any of those representatives yet concerning information about the needs of my office. I have okay. heard. Well, because they, 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 they have it. There was the kind. Of, there was some delays with the state to. to appropriate the funds that's been taken care of the the consulting group that's doing the study wouldn't start the processes or procedures they won't start it until they know the funds are available and the contract signed that was done just two weeks ago John is going down to Columbus on Friday to meet with them and he's saying that next week or the following week is when they will start the interview process of getting input from engineer, auditors, I think at the health department, 
you know, regional planning, and and, and my estimation is, is, and I understand, you know, everyone's is has got input on it, but if we let an independent agency, and I almost hate the word study, but sometimes studies are necessary of an independent agency and let them give us direction as a governance of the process and and so forth and so on. So that, I'm a little discouraged because I thought this was well underway because I talked with John back in February and we said, John, we've got some immediate concerns. You remember some things come up in February that we weren't getting things done at the level that we should. And I said, you know, let's give 90 days, let's get this thing done. Well, unfortunately, government bureaucracy, and it's not starting till next week. But um. And I guess just on that, as I told them at the meeting in February, when we had that first stakeholder meeting with them about this, doing the study, um, with or without the study, we have statu these two have, <laughs> have statutory obligations you, with the system we have to get their jobs done and to what they're obligated to do. And probably, at least from Mark's perspective, he has to outreach beyond what he's required to do from interest and demands from other people who want mm -hmm. those services, which is where regional planning would come into play. But in the, regardless, like I said, whether that happened or not, I think we still have a reason to fix the base layer that we have. And then if the study says now we need to intervene and do more, based on their requirements, I'm not sure how much they can, that study can direct these two to change the, their ways, I, you know, I mean, in terms of what they're required to do, but yet, certainly, to taking it broader and further and benefit to more people, I think the study definitely could probably will show us that. Um, no, I'm going to let you guys talk. <laughs> and and, and I, I guess as far as the study goes, you know, as Julie had said, I have not, you know, talked to anybody, but I guess that's going to happen, you know, shortly in, in the future. Um, our, our GIS system, uh, and first, I mean, <coughs> you know, we, we do a lot of retraining on what GIS is, um, and so maybe we'll go through that short process again of what GIS is. You know, the, the you know GIS, it, it seems like it's uh, one of those things that comes <coughs> and goes and comes and goes and comes and goes as far as, as what it is. But, uh, um, and, and I just want to highlight a couple of things to give a base overview of what GIS is. I mean, Mike, are you familiar with? I am. The, I've, I've, read, uh, I've read these. You know, okay, read so them. I don't need to go through, you know, the, uh, of what it is, basically. Right. Um, you know, we, we are talking about smart maps. And, and smart maps uh, give not only government, but also give private industry the ability to utilize information and mapping to build uh, economic development. Uh, which is key uh, to build uh, parcel information that is not only usable uh, but is also efficient for the public to 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 receive and, and to process data. Um, the, our GIS system, while we can continuously talk about setting up a GIS department, is not new. Um, I started working for the county in '91, uh, and at that time, uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, uh, Julie, uh, it, it, with her uh, office, uh, then Rick Smith uh, as auditor, Jim Nims as the county engineer, uh, started the process and started us on our way with our GIS system. Um, and for the last uh, 23, 22, 23 years, we have actively been working on maintaining and building our GIS system to where we now have a system that is comprehensive enough that our data sets uh, are in line and uh, at, at least at level, if not exceeding the level of any GIS department anywhere in the state of Ohio or anywhere in the nation as far as local governments go. Um, our problem is the fact that we have no central hub. We have no central place for processing that data and getting that data out to the public. Uh, you know, Holly had said, and I, I do want to thank Holly for kind of championing this uh, process um, and keeping us moving on our way. Um, you, Julie and I, and, and I say Julie because Julie and I are probably the biggest users as far as trying to get the data out um, to the public. Uh, and, and we have the biggest stake in the system uh, that, uh, you know, we each have needs, but our needs that, that we're fulfilling, and, and you know, I can fulfill my, my GIS needs in-house. Uh, Julie can fill a lot of her GIS needs in-house, but the outreach for what GIS does, uh, it, as an example, our 
uh, EMA and EMS uh, for fire districts and for uh, uh, ambulance districts for, for runs. Uh, the 911 system is built upon this GIS layer. It is not actively used heavily because it is not set up to be used efficiently. But when Dan calls uh, and has questions or concerns about uh, the maps and changes in fire districts or changes in ambulance districts, somebody has to process that data for him. Somebody has to be able to build a map so that the fire departments and the 911 operators, when they look at a map, they know who do I dispatch? When do I dispatch? Where is that fire? Where is that location? And that information literally is life-saving. Uh, those moments when a, a, an operator is looking at a map or looking at information to determine uh, what, what department do I send? Who do I send? Did I call the right department? Did I send the wrong department? You know, those minutes matter. And so when Dan calls and needs that information built, we build that information for him. Um, you know, and, and I do that willingly, and I do that, uh, and I'm not saying I, I say we, but there is no central place for that information to be housed. Uh, when, when people call that are doing uh, a historic information and they want to locate uh, all of the cemeteries, for instance, in Seneca County, uh, because apparently people visit places to go visit old cemeteries. Seneca County has a lot of old cemeteries, and it's a bigger deal than most people realize. But building that information and building that layer that, that, some, that shows where all of the cemeteries are in Seneca County, that can be put out for people to utilize uh, for, for tourism, for attraction, to bring a few more people into Seneca County. Uh, you know, that, it, it, that is a real need, and, and so we build that information. Uh, for the Historic Society so that they have it and they have that map available. Uh, school districts, when schools and bus routes uh, need to be changed and when, when, when bus operators need to know uh, what their routes are for the new school year because they have new students, uh, we, they need to have efficient mapping system that they can route their busing uh, so that they know that they are doing the most efficient uh, for pickups, for, for deliveries of, of those students. Uh, in, in the safest manner, in the most efficient way to save them money and to save them time. Um, who builds that layer? Who builds that information for, for the school systems? Uh, we, we do that right now for the school systems. And, and while we do it willingly and, and happily, it, it, it takes me, for instance, away from my job of maintaining roads and bridges, which is what my job is, to provide services for other places and, and for, for other agencies. Um, the general public doesn't care. They, they, they couldn't care less how the data is, is delivered. Uh, they just know that it needs to be done. Um, and, and so we make sure that information gets done. But it is not being done efficiently and it's not being done effectively um, on the scale that it could be. And that is what I'm hoping this GIS plan and what we have been working with can start to address. Um, over the years, uh, we have had staffing issues at TaxMap kind of segueing here. Um, TaxMap has for years been a one-person department. Uh, and so when TaxMap is closed, when, uh, when my, my TaxMap supervisor is sick, has a doctor's appointment, is on vacation, the office is closed. Uh, and there is nobody there to approve deeds, to look at legal descriptions, to uh, serve the public in that capacity. And the manner in which property is transferred, everything starts at TaxMap. So if my department isn't housed or isn't, isn't open, Julie can't do her job. And people drive from Cleveland, they drive from Columbus, they drive from Cincinnati, they drive from Toledo, drive from Foster, I don't care where they drive from. If they drive from, you know, walk across the street, come to a public office, and that office is closed, now they cannot perform the duties that they came to do. Uh, and so about uh, two years ago, I, I met with the Bar Association uh, extensively about the needs of the tax map department and at that time got the uh, approval from the commissioners, which um, I don't know if any of you were here then, um, to, to hire a part-time employee. Maybe. Yeah, we were here. Okay. Yeah, first year. Uh, to hire a part-time employee. Uh, at TaxMap and, and, and work with the Bar Association, work with the Commissioner's Office to 
fund that office a little bit more so that we could hire a part-time employee. This is uh, a full and a part-time So, so I, right, so I'd have a full and a part-time employee to cover those times when, when my supervisor would be off. Um, came to the conclusion very quickly, nobody wants to work part-time. You, you, it is not a part-time, this is not a thing that you can do part-time. Um, you know, it, by the time you look at benefits and by the time, you know, a lot of people are looking for health insurance, um, you know, at the end of a two-week period, by the time you pay your health insurance, you're literally making about $20 uh, in your check. Uh, it, it, no one's going to work for that. Uh, so we decided at the time, well, we also have this GIS need. So why not hire a full-time employee? So we have two full-time employees up there being paid half by the commitment that was made by the commissioners for uh, funding that other half employee and then the other half of that being funded by various departments to start handling some of the GIS activities as well. <clears throat> the more efficient we make this office, the less time is spent doing each operation. So we make, the, the, we make it more efficient. Now my supervisor has more time to work on, on, on building GIS. This other full-time employee has more time to work on GIS. And we start working towards having a actual tax net GIS department. Um, and at the time, uh, we were looking at uh, funding that office uh, through the general fund and through various departments where the engineer would pay a portion of it, so on the water, through ditch maintenance would pay a portion of it, the auditor's office would pay a portion of it, EMA, EMS would pay a portion of it, because these are all the stakeholders, these are all the users. Um, and you know, 5% here, 10% here, 10% here, 15% here, you know, and, and work towards building those funds and, and having people all take a stake in what they're doing. Um, and, and we were moving down that, that line and came up with some issues, um, you know, which, you know, you know the, it was a very vetted process, uh, you know, with a lot of discussion, a lot of open discussion. And um, at the time, uh, you know, we were housing the, the department full time. I had a uh, intern that was working with me that I moved into a full-time position there. Um, I was just covering the cost uh, out of m &R funds uh, because we need to keep moving on this process. Um, but because of the, you know, the instability and not knowing exactly where we were going to be with the GIS department, um, he found other employment, uh, and which is, I'm, I'm sad to say, because he was a fantastic employee. Um, but he moved on. And so we are down to one employee again uh, at TaxMap. And once again, we're to the point where uh, when the office is closed, the office is closed. Uh, and so the phone calls are starting to come back again. Uh, you know, your office is closed. We can't process. We can't process. We can't process. I can't, you know, I'm supposed to, I closed today, but I can't transfer my property. That's a problem. Um, so starting uh, Monday uh, of this week, of last week, Monday of last week, this week, this week um, I uh, hired a, an intern uh, who we are working on continuing, continuing the process of updating our GIS maps um, and continuing the work of trying to keep that office open. Um, once again, I'm paying for that out of M&R funds uh, because there just simply aren't funds available to build the GIS. Um, this is something that is so important for us to do as a county, as a, a local government to provide these services to the public um, that, you know, Julia said that she would be willing to, to, to pay, I'm willing to pay, but it's not Julie's job to pay for it, and it's not my job to pay for it. It is truly a county-wide effort of information that needs to be built, and that is where we start talking, you know, maybe we need to look at this more as a comprehensive system housed under 010 instead of under 010, right? Yeah. Instead of under this guise of trying to get percentages from each uh, of the of the stakeholders. Yeah, let, let, let's boil this down. Yes. How much? The fact no, no. No. The fact of the matter is, is that we all agree that we need the system. Yes. <laughs> okay. The fact of the matter is, is that there's been a problem with the administration of the system or who is responsible for maintaining uh, the office, who's responsible for handling things. What if, uh, and I have had some discussions with Julie about this, and I've not had a chance to talk to you, Mark, but what if under this scenario, uh, 
instead of the county auditor and the county engineer uh, have an equal responsibility, basically, is what it amounts to here. What if the engineer's office had super, superpowers over the system or had ultimate control of the GIS? And the auditor's office did a day to day, had the day to day um, supervision for that employee and maybe some cross train some people in the auditor's office because of the location. So that if there is a situation in which one or both aren't there, at least there would be somebody that has some working knowledge to be able to give the, you know, about 10,000 feet answers. As they might not be able to be full service, but somebody would be able to answer the questions. What if we set it up, depending on what happens with the study, I get that, but what if we set it up that the engineer has ultimate supervisory responsibility, but on a day-to-day -day basis, the auditor's office is in charge of running that office, and that a committee be formed if the, if the, if the commission is going to uh, fund it, or if the commissioners are going to fund it, the county is going to fund it, uh, that there would be, at, in the beginning, a quarterly meeting of, of the major stakeholders, to make certain that things are moving forward, and that hopefully that those meeting times can dissipate as time goes on. But what if we what if we do that at this point to move this thing forward? Everybody uh, is everybody's involved that needs to be involved, and we agree to fund it. What what would you think about that scenario? But I I, I would think that uh, first off if the 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 last part first as far as funding it, yay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and as far as uh, supervi supervisor super supervisory, there you go. That word <laughs> goes. Um, I I had been willing in the past to uh, you know oversee the department as I am responsible to oversee the tax map part department, right? By law, anyhow. Um, and you know even day to day that I see no need to add another level of. Well, the only reason I say that is because from a, from a practical standpoint now, I mean, Ju Julie's office is right next to the tax mm -hmm. map office, and it just makes sense to me that, you know, there could be a sign if you have a question, nobody's here, whatever, come next door. Or if somebody needs to call in that they're not feeling well that day, it makes a whole lot more sense for Julie to find that out from just from a pure location standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, there's a super supervisory mm -hmm. authority, if you will, in the form of a, in the form of the engineer, and also an ongoing committee uh, that reviews the progress, that talks about the daily operation. Again, hopefully that can be, you know, go to semi-annual as opposed to quarterly or whatever once things start rolling. But at least we would have a solution as the administration of the GIS. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to consider that? I, I'd be willing to consider and look at look at that. I mean, the, the details of it. I mean, I, I I am not going to give up the the administrative responsibilities I have for tax man. Okay. By any stretch of the imagination. So but from the from the day to day operational standpoint, would you be willing to allow that person, whoever it is, to report to Julie, and then uh, if there are any major concerns, that you would step in? Uh, possibly. Okay. I mean, we, I'm not going to well, say no. I guess, Julie, would you be willing to do that? To, to handle the day-to-day -day operations of the, of the GIS and the tax map from a personnel standpoint, from an operation of the office? Well, it, it would be very difficult to split the GIS from the tax map. Is, is it, well, I get that. We need I get to it. understand I get that. It has so. to be a combined effort. Uh, but I'm even thinking that maybe we could, if time allowed and if the personnel were available to do a little bit of cross training with one of the people in the auditor's office so that again oh I, I think the cross training issue would be fantastic if I there think were the a situation in yeah. which you know somebody wasn't there at least the public it would be relatively seamless to the public mm -hmm. at that point so uh, so yeah. in terms of this part that the role that Julie which are, I guess I'm what I'm for your or proposing here that Julie would play is at least even if Mark approved I, I don't know who approves vacation whatever that stuff but if at least Julie would always know that okay we've got this person you know going to be gone this week but we know the other one's going to be here or whatever would the office hours I guess she would always know if that if any reason that office is not staffed you know kind of the out of service kind of thing but the um Hours of that office are they this? I think I asked this. I don't remember the answer. Are they the same as what everybody else in that building? Everybody else in that building works at what hours? Thirty-five hours a week. Thirty. Thirty-five. Thirty-five hours a week. So could that office work those exact same hours? And, and does that 
better or worse, I'm just thinking out loud, because that gets some uniformity to the functions of the offices in the building. Right. There's no question that, that GIS not? is necessary and the things that, that, that happen for a, you know, a, a number of reasons uh, need to continue. But you know, our responsibility, our the, the royal hour, is to the citizens of the county and those people coming in that need information. What makes it easiest for that to happen? In well, my humble opinion, it would be easiest if they had somebody to talk to that was in the next office if they had a concern or a complaint. I get that you need responsibility for the tax map. I, I get that. But you know, if it, it, uh, on a daily basis, if Julie were able to handle the personnel issues, the running of the office, setting the hours, et cetera, with the engineer's office having overall supervision responsibilities in conjunction with the auditor's office, uh, and for a commissioner to be involved once a quarter at this point to make sure that that's running smoothly. Right now, we're in a state of flux. We know it's needed, but we don't know how the administrative Ought to work. So let's try to get that result, at least try it. Uh, you know, let's say for, you know, give, give me a year, six months, whatever, see if everybody feels comfortable with it, and then go for it. Yeah, it, it, I, and I'm not sure if, if the, when you talk about like processing data as far as that, it is our hope, my hope and intention that in a short period of time that the, the dissemination of information is not handled by our offices it's handled by regional planning uh, regional planning is the clearinghouse for the information if a developer comes in and wants information uh, if uh, uh, if uh, 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 Dan comes in and has changes on his map right uh, it is regional planning that uh, does that what what okay. what my employee would do uh, it, as far as my role goal goes is build build data right. not process data Again, they're a user build I, I get that they're a yeah. user the problem that we the problem that we're having is with administration of it I, I no I don't I don't think so I mean I don't think we have we we don't have a department to administer right now is the problem that's we, what we're well we to need to have that's one. what we're that's trying what to, we're right. to have one and that's why we're trying to structure yeah. it in right. a manner yeah. that would make the that would that would be best for the city yeah. and I agree with you Mark because that's what I put it the way it is on this flow chart right now is that you know, regional planning would be basically to everybody that your two departments don't directly have to take care of and right. have to provide things for. Because you need that just for your own functions, even if nobody else asks you for it. Mm -hmm. um, but that is, then this hub would be that office to administer, what we're talking about, this in, in tax map GIS. And we keep that running for all the county purposes at the level of your offices and requirements. Because without that, Regional planning really can't. They can then tie into the system to do everything else, mm -hmm. right? right? We need that to be. Am I correct? I'm looking at both of you yeah. to be developed well and to be before they can do more integration work out of it, right? Correct. Because otherwise, they're going to have to have their own base, and that's just not efficient at all. Right. Well, so I don't know if Julie wants to. Yeah, I like to hear. I like to hear Julie's thoughts. In going through this process and trying to figure out what's the best for the county. Um, and I echo what Mark said back when his previous engineer, Mr. Nims, and the previous auditor, uh, Mr. Smith, they had the foresight back in the early 90s to see the need for GIS and what the potential is there from a safety sta standpoint, taxation standpoint, and just a public service um, type standpoint. So um, I can always give what I have learned during that process, being involved with it in the early 90s, um, but we are at a point where we need to look at what's in the best interest of the county, what, what is gonna take us down the best path um, to give the taxpayers um, the best product for their money that they're spending. Um, so having said that, knowing where we are as a county, I've reached out to several other counties of equal or similar size, for instance, Sandusky County. They have a little different tax base than what we have because they have the turnpike, so you know you can't always compare things with them. But similar size and functionality, and, and when I say that, I talk about auditor's office staffing size. Um, I had the chance to talk to um, Bill Farrell, the auditor that had been in place since 1979. He just recently retired. Um, but 
the tax map during whatever term or whatever the commissioners had given that to the auditor's office so it's not uncommon for the auditor's office to have a role in that it's not uncommon for larger counties to have a standalone GIS department correct mark that that is right that and is it, completely unrelated to either of our it's a GIS department yeah so. right so um, <coughs> I guess it's ultimately what you as a board of commissioners decide. I will fill whatever role you think I'm best suited for or the auditor's office is suited to do. Um, but, you know, we do have a need. We have an express need. Um, in fact, the imagery that's on the auditor's website, the imagery that the police and sheriff use, the imagery that Mark uses, uh, is based off of the information that the auditor's office invested in and we're getting ready to do that again for next year so we're making an investment we want we want current information we want the public to have um, current information on their properties we want to be able to utilize it as a, a tool that makes our office more efficient so what would you see the possibility to be able to do any cross training with anybody in your office uh, to help fill in from time to time? I don't think that's a problem, uh, but we'd have to check with the prosecutor for the way that the conveyance standards are currently set up for the county. Okay. Well, any more come? I mean, we can, you know, we can look at a date that we're going to decide it makes a decision on, or to get back together as a group or back in here. Or where we want to do at this point but um, you know define put some more responsibilities to this this is just a draft mm -hmm. that's all it is um, with some points there of how we get somewhere but I I would think this our decision whatever it is would give some direction then for regional planning to know what to work towards mm -hmm. and prepare for as well as whatever is going to come out of the study but I I don't foresee us making a decision or not making one, I guess not making one is more of a hindrance to the study than us making one, in my opinion. I, I just don't see, like I said, that's going to be helpful information moving forward, but I think more helpful on the importance of a go-to place for anybody and economic development driver, all of the people in Seneca County and those who want to come into our county or need information from our county to have regional planning as their outlet of where they go and where we direct people to. Right. I, I don't want to come across as trying to cram anything down. So what I'd yeah. like to have happen, if possible, is for Mark and Julie sometime during this next week to get together, talk about the setup, talk about the structure, to see whether or not you guys can come to a conclusion that makes sense, uh, different than what we have or similar to what we have or whatever the case might be. I'd like to make a decision about it next week. Uh, and then we can move forward and uh, at least give it a try. This isn't, I, mean, I don't think we're, anybody's saying this is the way it's going to be and, you know, that's it. I think that we're saying let's try something from an industry standpoint and see if it works and get this thing off the table for a while uh, and come back three months later and say, okay, how's it going? Uh, or, you know, it's not working, let's do something else. Or it is working, great, let's, uh, you know, let's fully implement it. Well, I, I mean, I, I think that that's a, a great way to start. We still, the study hopefully will give us further direction on how to do it. One thing that I do have an issue with, and I, I if I can re recall, I think this was about a $75,000 budget for the GIS, roughly speaking. Well, and the it, county was going to pick up about 45% of that. Yeah, it, and, yeah. That, and that's what we were looking at at the beginning. Um, we have, I mean, this process hasn't stopped just because we didn't get this committee started. Um, and as a result, um, a lot of that money, uh, especially for uh, building the system, uh, uh, I've worked with you guys on splitting costs for uh, the copy scanner we need. So um, you guys went in with it and, and I went in on purchasing that uh, together and that was like a, a $11,000 uh, project uh, out of that initial startup cost uh, the software licenses I have been maintaining the software licenses uh, up until now and just sent a bill just for half 
the software licenses through the commissioner's office and I'm still paying the other half of the software licenses for that. Um, so, you know, I, those numbers are revised. A high estimate, we would be looking at 60000 um, annually. On an, an annual basis. I mean, there's right. some initial startup costs. Not anymore. A, Is the startup's done? That's done. Okay. Yeah, we, but we, could, could there not be some user fees? I mean, I, I, that would be an administrative. Well, we run into some issues with that with the townships. They're already, the five I'm not to charge everybody. I'm saying, you know, if there are some people that use it consistently. Well, and that's what I talked to Roxanne about a little bit, and at that um, stakeholder meeting, we mentioned that, or Julie and I talked about it before after that meeting, was if they're providing some things to somebody comes in and needs something done, they could establish some user fees, but there's some limitations to what they can collect, isn't there, Julie? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's. I mean, when, when GIS back, what, early 2000 or prior, Mark, when regional planning was established, I mean, that, that was an avenue for them to have funding was to be the hub to release the data. Now, since that time, there's been some um, uh, issues with how much can be charged. <coughs> so as far as, as getting the data to somebody. So back in the day, it was thought as a big revenue stream. Today, no, because you can only charge a minimal amount to recoup maybe the CD or whatever you're putting the data on to dispense it. So. It's not well, a big revenue stream. Yeah, and I and I don't know that at what if this is set up and regional planning ends up, you know, being that arm for people to go to. I'm not sure the users, the people you're providing for, you'd want to charge them mm -hmm. because that's county operations. Right. Mandated. I mean, <laughs> it's not. I mean, when, when, when we look at the cost here. Um, can we can we not look at? I mean, with the end, okay. The engineer and the auditor, and I believe the health department, those were three willing contributors towards it. The county picks up the rest. We don't get down and we don't break it down into the townships and, and all the other soil and water and so forth that, that the engineer, the auditor, and uh, uh, the health department, you pay whatever that comes up with, 30% or 40%, whatever, and the county just picks up the rest. I, I, I have an I have an issue of the county picking up the whole the whole shooting match there. Um, I guess I feel we have an obligation at this point where we're at, but that's just my opinion. I said so, you know I can respect where you're coming from too. Um, Julie, you talked about talking to some of the other auditors. Did you ask them that question? How it's funded? Um, if I recall, for Sandusky County, um, I think the commissioners basically pay one employee, and the auditor picks up the other employee. Okay. Mark, but again, that's that? under the it, it is done as it is done all kinds of different ways. There, there's no standard. I mean, that's the one thing that that we have found over the years is that there is no one way that you know departments are funded or managed or administered. There, each county has its has its own you know best way, uh, and th th there's no consistency. That there's really no best practice that yeah. we that we're no. aware of. It's whatever works best for it. and and to, to that Fred you know I, I have always and, and always been a uh, uh, a stakeholder person you know people that have a stake in the system um, should pay for the system and that gets buy-in and that's where we started this process um, but the other end of that is is that uh, the, so each department that has has need or has use pays because now you're a stakeholder now you, because you're paying, you have a vested interest in making sure that it is the best it can be. You know, it, you know whether it be 5% or 10%, it is money coming out of your budget that's going into the process, you're vested. You, you're, you're in it. So you want to make sure everything gets done, gets done well and you understand the struggles you have with getting stuff out of it. If somebody else is paying the bill and you're just wanting data, wanting information, there's no end to what you want, okay? But if you're a stakeholder, you understand where things are. That being said, in the end, all of the stakeholders are within the realm of the county. So even though soil and water is a stakeholder, ditch maintenance is a stakeholder, auditor's office is a stakeholder, engineer's is a stakeholder, EMA and MES is a stakeholder, we're all under the county umbrella. So whether you take 
uh, you know, 5% out of here and 10% out of here and 5% out of here and 10% out of here, it's still all revenues being generated and, you know, for Seneca County. Well, except that it's not cost neutral because, you know, we're not going to, you know, if we were up here and said, okay, we're taking 15% away from the auditor, yep. from, the, from the engineer and 5% yep. away from the auditor, we're saying that your budget stay the same mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, fund the GIS system, the tax system. Right. So that, I mean, it, so it really is no, a cost neutral. And, and, I, and I wasn't implying that it was. Right, I'm right. Saying, no, but I, I, get your, I get where you're coming from. is still under the umbrella of Seneca County. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to that extent, it, it, you know, it, and I, I said it before, you know, I, right now I'm continuing to pay for this. So as far as being a stakeholder, I understand that it, that it's it, it's not cost neutral. I understand that that there are costs to the county, and right now, you know, I'm picking those up through MNR, um, and have been picking those up through MNR because those are things that I believe are important. As far as stakeholders go for this entire process, you know, I I had been and am willing to pay one of the highest rates for the system out of MNR funds, but have absolutely no need. I process my own data. I, 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 I do GIS. I, I do my own stuff. I, I, would, I would ask nothing from a GIS department because I, it's what I, I do my own. But it's important enough that I'm still, you know, I'm committed to doing the process. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Where do we go from here? I, I think first we have to deal with governance. Well, that's and that I would agree that Julie and, and Mark you two get together and see if like you talk this this super control if, if you could buy into that Julie run the system and you have super control over it then we deal with, with that takes care of the governance aspect of it and then then we hash out the, yeah, the I, budgetary. I, I, I am not going to give up day-to-day -day responsibilities that I am statutorily bound to have period I mean, I, I am not going to give up responsibilities. I, I am required by law to be the administrator of that. And whether counties have chosen to move that responsibility on to, to the auditor's office or not, it, it is not my concern. Um, yeah, is, I think, Mark, I think we've got to cover so, yeah. by saying that you have overall responsibility. Yeah. I, you know, I don't want to get into a, Yeah, I guess I we'd have to say what this day-to-day -day -day means. So right. well, that's, well, that's where we'd have, that's, and we can talk about that and yeah. see what that I, means. I mean, the ultimate goal, right. please remember, is to do what's best for those people that are the users. Yep. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 we're not looking at this as a turf war kind of a thing or, uh, you know, who's, who's going to win. It's what's the best, yep. what's the best solution. So we'll work with your schedules to meet, and if you want one of us with, or you two just want to talk, whatever, and then that we could next week, you know, have you back in to give us your update, what you find out, and then we can, if we want it, that's what you were proposing, wasn't it? To yeah, I, I mean, I, if, if anybody's involved, I think you should be. You've done all the work on this thing, so, uh, you know, if they need you. Well, no, it's fine. I just didn't want to. If they need, if they need some the hog. <laughs> buffer. That would be fine. I mean, or I would prefer that uh, that they come back to us and say, "This is what we'd like to do." So, so we, we can agree. Yeah. Because again, I, I you know I don't want to cram anything down, but mm -hmm. I want to do what's best for the. For well, are are we ultimately waiting for this study no. then? No. Or the study's going to say we need a GIS. I get that. Right. And it's going to tell us all the great ways it can benefit yeah. our county internally ex and from the external perspective. I think what which is going to be fabulous, but. I think what we've done here is eliminate the fact that regional planning would run it. I mean, that's right okay. now, that's what we've done. We're taking that out of the equation. Okay. Let's, let's talk about what we're doing uh, internally and try to make that better or make some hybrid of what we're doing internally. Let's get the other stuff out of the equation and let's move forward. Then in the very near future, regional planning can pick up the piece that yeah. needs to be taken and care depending of. Depending on who knows what the study's going to say. I yeah, don't know. if that's what the study says, yeah. Good. I'm fine with it. Okay, man, brother. It's been two years. We gotta we gotta put this to bed and we gotta move on. Yeah. Well, I want to thank this board of commissioners for seeing the need to take this seriously and, and to um, review 
the information and, and look into it. Thank you. And I did speak with um, the health department because of the plan that has been referenced that was done by regional planning last year, previous director, um, about partners. They immediately designated some funds from a grant to for their portion mm -hmm. and transferred those to us. <clears throat> and so I was asking them, what you know, what do you need to have happen with those funds to fulfill your grant requirements, et cetera, because that plan that you've put it in there for is not coming to fruition as it was outlined. And they said, basically, short stories, well, we can use the funds for whatever um, may benefit the GIS best. Mm -hmm. And if that's equipment, I, I say, I proposed, I said, such as equipment, you know, that's, you know, that would be a benefit in with, an, if we have an employee, we, there might be needs that way, those kinds of things. They said, that's fine. So we know that we are okay with utilizing those funds for some of those types of startup. I know most of the startups taken care of, mm -hmm. but um, so. Yeah, well, and I would like to formally thank Commissioner Stacy for her work on this. This is a result of her work, and I know a number of these want to thank uh, both Mark and Julie for uh, sitting down and discussing it. And, and, uh, Hopefully, moving this forward. Thank you guys very much. All right. And just a reminder our board session next week is in Postoria. It's our evening meeting in Postoria. So if you are needing them to be there, they would have to come to Postoria in the evening, or if you want to wait till the following week. They would have to wait till the following week. Okay. <laughs> so. That's not going to work for you. Okay. All right. So we do the following week. If you would, you know, if you'd have something done. And you want to bring it to us in writing? Oh yeah. Uh, right. the, 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 do you have new? Uh, uh, the so that we, yeah. Let's take a brief CPI recess tables. before we officially call the regular yeah, meeting to order. Let's um, take like a three-minute break. I can't find them anyway. Yeah. Okay. That's all I need to do is plug in the new CPIs. And, yeah. 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 Yeah.